Hey everyone, I am spinning in my chair but I'm recording with the iPhone 11 Pro Max and I'm just holding the phone in my hand and I'm just using the default camera with the default mic. Now you guys know that I am predominantly an Android user. The last time I had an iPhone was the iPhone 4 which is about 9 years ago but my friend Gary dropped off this iPhone 11 Pro Max a few weeks ago. I did an unboxing. I was incredibly impressed with the build quality, but he dropped it off again and I've got a day or so to play around with it. So what we'd like to do in this video is test the camera. I'd like to test what the iPhone cameras can do at the front and the back from a vlogging perspective. Now, I will be recording at 4K at 60 frames per second. Now, I'm not saying that that is the best frame rate to record in. I'm not even saying it's the best resolution to record in, but there are very few phones on the market that offer 4K 60 frames per second at the back and the front. The iPhone 11 iPhone 11 Pro are the only phones I can think of right now that do offer that. So why not record at this frame rate that other phones just aren't offering? So what I'm going to do is pop out and record a few clips and just help us see what this phone can actually do. As a YouTuber, the idea of having a phone that can record really good footage is obviously something I'm spinning around here uh, is obviously something which is appealing to me now just as a reminder I'm recording with the phone I'm not using an external microphone all of the bad sounds all of the good sounds anything good or bad it will all be coming from the iPhone because I really do want to see what this can and cannot do so I'm just about to head out but when I've got the lights off in here, because these are like natural white lights, you can see that in low light, like any phone, especially camera phones, does get a little bit grainy in low light. That is to be expected. It's basically what happens when you're in low light. This is something that all cameras struggle with. Action cameras, smartphones, regular cameras, when you're in low light, things can get a little bit grainy. But let's go out and see what it's like and natural light. So I'm now recording with the back camera, the main camera. When you are recording using the main camera, you've got three options when you're recording video. You've got 0 0.5 times, one times, and two times. Right now, I'm recording with 0.5, and when I do that, I can change it all the way up to 1.5. So I can zoom from 0 0.5 to 1.5. When you start recording video at the regular one times zoom, you can start from one and go all the way up to three times zoom, like that, and you can go all the way up and down. So instead of being from 0 0.5 to 1.5, you can go from 1 to 3. And now I am recording at 2 times zoom. So the options are 0.5, 1 and 2. When you start at 2, you can go from 2 all the way up to 6 times zoom. You can't go below 2, but you can start at 3, 4 or 5 times zoom, whatever you want. And you can start recording from that if you want. So I'm now recording with the selfie camera again, 4K, 60 frames per second. And, you know, it's not the brightest of days, but you can see the quality is quite good. Obviously being outside, you're going to pick up a lot of sounds, a lot of noise, a lot of birds singing, different things. Now, when you're recording with the front camera, the selfie camera, you're not going to get those zoom options. And the main camera, the presets actually work quite well. You've got 0.5, 1 and 2. And the zoom level that you can get whilst recording will change depending on which you select. Now, before you start uh, recording, before you, you click to record, you can select whatever zoom level you want. But if you select 0.5, you can only go up to 1.5. And you have to really know what you're going to do before you start recording. And obviously, they're using different sensors at the back to achieve that and you don't have those sensors at the front. Now, from a phone perspective, having that kind of zoom functionality is not new. In the Android world, at least, 
you know, this is the Wally P30, what I've been using for the last few months. This has got 10 times zoom, not six, like here. And, you know, the Wally P30 Pro can do more. But what we've seen in the Android world is we've seen all these new phones coming out. And these new phones are offering really, really good cameras at the back. You know, and some of them are beating the iPhone in some areas. But the front sensor is still the area where they aren't really catching up yet. They're still offering 1080p at 30 frames per second. And it's a little bit strange that there's Android phones out there that can do 4K and 60 frames per second at the back camera. But with this selfie camera, it's still limited to 1080p at 30 frames per second. A little bit strange, but for me, this is one area where Apple is really pushing ahead of the Android world. And I'm not sure why Android is still playing catch up with the selfie camera. Now, if you are a vlogger, if you're doing videos for your friends, for YouTube, for whatever, then obviously the, this selfie camera is very, very important. And it seems to be that Apple are the only one that have, have not forgot about that. I would say though, overall, Overall, I would say that the video quality from both cameras is very, very good. Now, here is a very, um, a very silly test, but what I'm going to do is just jump around a little bit. What's the stabilization like? Now, what normally happens, what normally happens with phones when you do that is that they normally use software to address that, the school kids up there, that's the noise. They normally use software to address the stabilization and they do it post-processing, I guess, or on the fly. And what happens, you get this warping effect where it just doesn't look right. It looks almost like you're in a fishbowl. So that's kind of what you want to look out for when you're moving around a lot. bit brighter here just a little bit oh, it's so cold so earlier on I showed you low light but this is not low light this is darkness it's about 10 o'clock at night and yeah, it's really dark. This is this is the kind of environment where even even a really good camera would struggle in this light. I'm not seeing anything that suggests the iPhone is handling this better than any other Android phone I've tested this year. But I'm not seeing anything that suggests it's any worse either. There's a little bit more light here. And you can see that when there's some light it handles things pretty impressively actually you know when i was walking earlier on there were some street lights but th there wasn't a lot of light at all but here with the floodlights with the park things do look a lot better they do look a lot better and for a smartphone i would say that in this kind of environment this is actually pretty good So, so far I have talked about low light performance from the selfie camera and as someone who vlogs a lot that is important to me but as you would expect the main camera, the back camera is a little bit better. Both the front and the back can record at 4K up to 60 frames per second but the main camera has got more sensors, it's got the, the telephoto and the wide etc and the quality is going to be much better which means that in low light, you're going to see a significant improvement if you're recording from the, the main camera at the back rather than the selfie camera. And that is reflected right now. You can tell the difference from when I was recording before. Before, even when there were street lights, it just wasn't picking up the footage that well. You know, it just wasn't picking me up that well. So I am back in my warm house and I've looked at all the clips that I've recorded with the iPhone 11 Pro Max. 
So what I would like to do at this point is just summarize my thoughts on the iPhone 11, the 11 Pro and the 11 Pro Max. And I do include all of these phones together because from a video recording perspective, there really isn't a major difference between these phones. They all share the same 12 megapixel sensor at the front, f2.2 front sensor that can record up to 4K at 60 frames per second. The main difference is that the iPhone 11 Pro and Pro Max have an additional telephoto lens at the back. So when you buy the iPhone 11, at the back of the camera, you will get an ultra wide and a wide camera, but you also get a telephoto lens if you upgrade to the 11 and the 11 Pro, which will add a few different zooming options. But I think from a video recording perspective, those really aren't as useful. Certainly, I've not found the telephoto lens to be that useful when recording video because after a certain point, things get a little bit grainy. Now, what I would say is that overall, I was incredibly impressed. I was incredibly impressed. And that's coming from someone that normally uses Android phones. Now, what I would say about this, and it really is difficult to talk about the iPhone 11 without talking about the Android world. What I would say is that from a video recording perspective anyway, the iPhone 11 has some alternatives out there, a lot of cheaper alternatives. There are Android phones out there that can take videos that are just about the same quality or even better than the iPhone 11. We're seeing phones coming out with four or five sensors in the Android world with the back camera. But the problem is that even these phones that are coming out with four and five sensors that can record fantastic video at the back, they can only record 1080p at the front. That can only do 1080p at 30 frames per second. The new Xiaomi uh, CC9, or Note 10 as it's called, that's got five sensors at the back, one of which is 108 megapixels, and yet the front sensor can only do 1080p at 30 frames per second. And it's the same with the Google Pixel 4. The Google Pixel 4 can do 4K at 30 frames per second at the back, that's good. But at the front, you can only do 1080p at 30 frames per second. So. I don't know why, but in the Android world, they seem to be using sensors that just aren't designed for 4K, and they're certainly not designed for 4K at 60 frames per second. So from a purely specifications point of view, I think that the iPhone 11 range is so far ahead of the Android world right now. I think with the back cameras, there's a lot of alternatives out there if you're looking to take great photographs, great videos with the back sensor. But when it comes to the selfie camera, I really don't think there's anything that can match the iPhone 11 phones right now. They're really, really far ahead of the competition. And um, you know, I really wasn't disappointed with the video quality from this with the front with the selfie camera. But after using the iPhone 11 Pro Max, I must admit I've realized that that is quite limited, and I'm leaning towards buying an iPhone 11, perhaps a Pro Max, but I think I'll probably lean towards an iPhone 11. So what do I like about it and what do I not like about it? Well, from, again, a video re recording perspective, I thought the stabilization was really good, I really did. But just the overall video quality was just really, really, really good. You know, there were certain points where I thought that the video quality was even better than my Sony RX100 Mark III, and that's a digital compact camera. It's amazing that the iPhone is, you know, or just phones in general have caught up to digital cameras in this way. And, you know, the certain, the certain times when a, a, a smartphone camera is never going to match a digital camera, a dedicated camera. But when I was walking about with it, I was really, really impressed. You know, the, the quality the, the, of the footage, the colors, everything looked really, really good. Now, I did notice a difference in low light. In low light, all cameras struggle, let's be honest. But the front sensor was pretty bad in low light. You know, there was a few points when I was walking right underneath a street light and you couldn't even see me. I was holding the phone up and you couldn't see me. But there was a marked difference between the front uh, front cameras uh, and the back camera. The back camera, or the, the, the triple camera at the back, um, the triple camera at the back was really good in low light. It was pretty good in low light. I must, I must admit that was quite good. But the front camera, yeah, it was pretty poor in low light, but that's kind of par for the course. I've seen the same thing with other phones. I've seen it with cameras as well. So stabilization was good. Video quality was generally good. Um, a little bit grainy in low light with the front sensor, but generally, yeah, I was really happy with the video quality. 
audio quality was really good as well. Now, I'm not saying that everyone should just throw away their microphones. Generally speaking, I use a lav mic when I'm using, uh, when I'm recording with my phone, but you know, there are options out there if you want to improve the audio quality. But I think that out of the box, the microphones on the iPhone 11, I, I think they're quite good. There are some things that are annoying, you know, maybe they'll pick up a little bit too much background noise. Sometimes, you know, it, it, it just doesn't sound that good. But I was recording outside and I thought that the quality was quite good. And we're certainly not at the point where you can just throw away your external microphones. I would still say that most people should use a lav mic or a shotgun mic or something. But I think that, that you know, things are getting a little bit better. We're, you know, but in the past, I would say, several years ago, the, the audio quality from uh, from smartphones from a video recording perspective where, well, you know, sometimes the clips were borderline unusable. But we're at a point now where you can get away with just holding your phone. And that's what I was doing. I wasn't using a selfie stick this time. I just walked around using my hand without an external microphone. And I thought generally the audio quality was quite acceptable. So I was quite impressed with the microphones. I was quite impressed with the video. But there was a few little things that annoyed me. One of the, the, the simplest things, and hopefully this is something that they can change. I don't know if there's a setting for this. I checked, but I couldn't find anything. But whenever I opened the camera app, it would default back to 4K at 24. So I'd take a video clip, I'd walk around, I'd record another video, um, I'd set it back to 60 frames per second, go back in, come back out, and then I'd have to keep checking that I'd changed it back 24 to 30, 30 to 60, because it kept going back to these older settings. My preference would be for video clips to default back to the previous setting. I think there should be a button that says reset to default or something like that. But by, you know, by the, the usual standard, what you should do is, you know, the camera should just revert back to what you were using before. So I found that quite annoying because the risk of that is if you are vlogging and you want to re uh, record a, f a series of clips, say 4K30 or 1080 or whatever, you could be recording those clips and if you if you don't remember to change it to the frame rate and the resolution that you want, there is a risk that one of the clips will not be recorded at the right frame rate and the right resolution, which means that, yes, there are things that you can do. You can convert things in software to try and fix things, but it's never 100% the same. So you run the risk of running, of, of recording one of those video clips at the wrong frame rate and the wrong resolution. Now, I suspect there's, there's some uh, some good camera apps out there on iOS and you could use that instead of the default camera app. But the default camera app, I would say, is pretty good. And it's, you know, it's quite simple in many ways, but it's quite good in the way that it works. It's just annoying that it always resets back to the default setting. I had to keep going in and changing it 4K, 60 frames per second. Now, another thing which will concern anyone who records video clips and then wants to put it into their computer to edit. Now, when I'm recording video clips with my phone, generally speaking, what I do is just record one clip and then I quickly edit it on YouTube or here and I just upload it. I'm basically just editing one file and I do most of it through the phone. But if you're recording clips and putting it onto your computer, then, well, you're going to run into a problem. The thing is, video, normally it records at uh, 40, records audio at 48 kilobytes per second. Uh, but what they are doing is recording at 44.1. 44.1 is what's used for CDs and things like that. But video normally uses 48, it's just the standard. Now, I ran into a problem with that because when I uploaded all of these clips to Premiere Pro, the clips would not play correctly, everything started crashing. Now that is in part a limitation of Premiere Pro, but a lot of other video ed editing applications will struggle with 44.1 as well, which means that you need to try and convert, you need to try and convert the video files and change the audio bit rate and all this kind of crap. It's a real pain in the ass. Now I found that DaVinci Resolve actually works with 44.1 quite well, but if you're using Premiere Pro, if you're using, you know, maybe one other video editing application, there are a lot of problems trying to convert 44.1 because as I said, 48 is the standard. So if you're recording a regular video with your normal cameras, which have got dotted around the place, but if you're recording with your other clips, then you want to just slot in 
your clip from your iPhone, chances are your iPhone clip will be recorded at the wrong audio um, rate. So I, again, this is something that may be able to be fixed. I'm not sure if there's a setting in, uh, in the camera that can change that. I didn't find it myself. But there's probably something you can change that uh, in a different camera app if it comes to it. And I reckon that would transform the iPhone if you could you know, go back to the original setting and make sure that the audio is always recorded at 48, not 44.1. As something to bear in mind. And again, it does come down to how you use the iPhone 11 to actually record, how you're using it, you know, are you using it just to upload one video to YouTube or are you using it as a series of clips which you're going to edit? So as something to bear in mind that by default, the camera app will record at 44.1 for the audio. So those minor annoyances aside, I would say that the iPhone 11 is a fantastic vlogging phone. It's a fantastic phone for recording videos for vlogs. And I can see why many people are turning to it. Now, I've tested a lot of different Android phones. And again, I would say that generally speaking, in the Android world, there's a lot of uh, phones out there with cameras which stand shoulder to shoulder with the iPhone 11 phones. Some are even better. But the front sensor... I don't think there's anything that can beat the iPhone 11 right now. And as someone who has been using Android for several years, it's been nine years since I bought an iPhone. As someone who predominantly uses Android phones, I am seriously considering just buying an iPhone 11 now. I do think it's one of the best phones you can buy right now. In 2019, I, I can't see any phone in the market that can do that. And there's some fantastic phones coming out you know, for Android that have got, you know, all these amazing sensors at the back. But until they improve that front sensor, I would say that the iPhone 11 is the best phone for vlogging right now. I really do. It's not perfect. There are things about it I don't like. But overall, the video quality is great. The stabilization is good. The microphone quality is good. And overall, I was just seriously, seriously impressed with what it can do. Let me know what you think about it, guys. You know, I'd love to hear your opinion on what you like, what you don't like, especially if you own the phone yourself. Maybe some of the issues I complained about, maybe you can fix that with a camera app or, you know, something else. Um, but I'd love to hear what you think about uh, what you think about all of this. So please do leave a comment below. Thanks for watching and until next time, take care.